Well, I got good news. Some of my jobs got rescheduled today to Wednesday. And I have the rest of the day off to do a couple things I need to do, which I've already done. And now I get to do some stuff I want to do. So I get to play musical cars here. And uh, I'll show you who's going to be getting in the spotlight today after I do that. So bear with me and uh, we'll see who's going to be up on center stage. If you haven't been introduced yet, this is the slug bug truck slash smart car flatbed. There's a video on on it. Um, 2004 van vantage truck all long bed. It's a dump truck, but it's full of stuff. It's not going to the dump. But. Sounds like a 240 ZX.
this is Lola, the squash squad car. This is a car that is in a video. If you look up a uh, cop car crushed by Big Rig in Wyoming, this is the car. I got this car with Roxanne. Um, bought them at the same time. I think I got Lola for about four or five hundred bucks, if I remember correctly. And this is that front end I was talking about that if Ford, like on Mike Blue GT, was talking about, and there's all kinds of rumors about Ford making a four door Mustang. Well, this is the front of a Taurus, this is a police interceptor, without the front vinyl bumper and grill. And if you just had a quick glance, this kind of looks like a Mustang. This is the lower balance that actually lays flat here. That keeps me from getting to this windshield washer uh, plug that I was looking at on um, Roxanne, which I still need to fix. This actually has everything exposed. Um, but anyways, that was another video I was talking about. Different things I'm going to be doing to Roxanne. And I had somebody comment on one of my videos that they saw the crushed car, and I had a bunch of people that saw the video. It's probably got two or three million views on it. Not my video, but the video that the Weather Channel released about this car that basically had a semi-tractor get blown over um, in 80 mile an hour winds. The semi-tractor was a Volvo, probably was only doing like maybe 25 or 30 miles an hour. But it basically fell over on the driver's side of this car. And people wanted to know, hey, you know, I'd love to see that car after, I'm gonna make some more light here. This isn't, this isn't quite cut with backlighting. So, as a matter of fact, I got the swamp cooler on because it's actually a nice warm day. Uh, and uh, I'll close the door. smoke boys and girls bad for you stunt your drugs look at me i'm only about six six so anyways this is that front end that i think looks like a mustang and if if ford really wanted to cut some corners which they never do obviously because they redesign everything every three years except for the police interceptors which i don't know if they're still going to be allowing production of a ford taurus sho which is what this is. This is, was, <laughs> this is a crumpled carbon copy of what they should be um, as in, in interceptor sedan form. This is the twin turbo 2015 EcoBoost Ford interceptor sedan. Um, this one has, I shoot, I should have looked, but I think it has about 70,000 miles on it. So it's definitely seasoned a little bit. It's been in the weather. It had a windshield when I got it. It had actually all the body parts that you see missing, like the nose, were there. And um, I'll pop the hood real quick. Even the gas struts still work. So this is the same motor that's in the Ford Taurus SHO. It is a twin turbo. The way you can tell is because all these different ports and stuff go in all kinds of different directions. If it was the non-turbo version, um, this air box would hook directly to this side of the um, intake. This, these cars actually have kind of literally like a tunnel ram type of setup on it. Um, but uh, yeah, this, this engine and everything is the same as Roxanne more miles and a couple scratches and dents. But uh, um, I grabbed a lot of parts off of this car, which is all the parts you see piled in the back of the slug bug truck. 
the rear bumper somehow was in really good shape. I mean, it, it crushed the back, it obliterated the, the trunk lid. The trunk lid actually was still operational and could open and close. But um, this one has a trailer hitch on it, which is kind of cool because Roxanne didn't have one. So this might have been more of a traffic unit in a way of, they probably towed um, radar uh, trailers out, the little trailers that you see on the side of the road that say your speed here. Um, so um, this side of the car is not so bad. Um, it looks fairly straight if you were to just look at it down along here except for the twist in the body. Um, this quarter panel is actually t pushed over about two or three inches out of alignment which is why the door sticks out. Um, this door, oddly enough, did not get any damage whatsoever um, other than some scrapes and scratches. I don't even know if those are scratches. They're probably just from it getting rained on. But this window still works. This is that internal cage that, this is actually really funny because I have friends that do demolition derbies and they do really heavy duty weld cars. Um, like Iron Man cars, and this is actually what they put in a uh, demolition derby car to strengthen the chassis and body. And this is what they do on these cars so that they can withstand a 70, 60 to 70 mile an hour uh, impact in the rear, and uh, they can be hit from the side pretty good because this is uh, actually a unibody car. Um, but yeah, this door, other than this piece of trim which I think, now I remember, got ripped off when the light bar got ripped off. Because the light bar mounts right here where these two reflective strips. They don't look reflective, but it's weird. At night, these black strips actually turn bright silver with any type of uh, incandescent light. Um, but yeah, this piece of trim, I think, got caught in the uh, melee of getting squashed by the semi-tractor trailer because the trailer actually slid forward and crumpled down around the car. So, but that door I'm going to keep. And uh, so you're wondering, what are you going to do to this car? Um, me and my buddies, my main buddy, we both have Mad Max cars. We go to an event called Wasteland Weekend. I have a car named Charlotte, which is in one of my videos. Um, and uh, we're building cars that look like what you would have to work with and build if uh, the apocalypse, the end of the world, or, you know, World War III, and there wasn't anything left but junk. So you'd have to take whatever you had available and build yourself a car. It's totally just a cosplay thing. I think that's how you pronounce it, where I affectionately call it a renaissance fair for gearheads. I don't really need to be under the hood right now. I just want people to know that this is uh, this is a bad boy engine. Um, which if Ford was smart, they'd just make a Mustang out of one of these, but put the motor in the uh, conventional orientation like they do in a Mustang or a Ford truck and have it just rear-wheel drive. A rear-wheel drive four-door Mustang, which, you know, look more like this because <laughs> this isn't beat so bad I think there would definitely be a market in the uh, automotive enthusiasts realm I mean all-wheel drive which is what this is it's an all-wheel drive car with um, about California if you could get one of these new um, and the police interceptor uh, package um, I think is about 366 horsepower with I don't even think they make these with California emissions of this year probably the newer models they do but as of 2015 uh, twin turbo EcoBoost 3.5 police interceptor sedan Taurus um, doesn't have California emissions on it um, so you're telling me you could buy any police car you want brand new at a dealership, you probably have to order it. There's very few dealerships that carry the police interceptor options 
or the whole car is a police interceptor. You don't just buy a, a set of parts that go on a police interceptor. Um, it is a police interceptor from the from the day it's manufactured. Um, so, but if they were to come out with a Mustang that was four door, um, I would say just change the front end a bit, and of course the rear, because you know you need the rear to look like a Mustang, which is what we're doing today. Um, I just happened to get some parts at a junkyard and I saw a really cool Mustang there. It was an 06. I grabbed some seats from it and these taillights are wasted that were on Lola. Well, these are 2006 Mustang GT. Actually, they're the same taillights that are on probably any must Mustang of that year. But, um, I'm going to make this into a Mad Max car and it's going to be a street legal, completely functional, daily driven um, Mad Max car, which is what I've always wanted. I've had Mad Max cars that car um, that wasn't street legal, completely fun, completely awesome, great to take. I did kind of a little promotional thing for the Fury Road movie, not a official promotion but i used to race the other car charlotte at paris auto speedway i did this race called night of destruction several times um it's not a demolition derby it's a demolition type race it's like an autocross that they call it um but uh or demo cross so it's a demolition derby autocross you have to go around obstacles you do a couple heat races to kind of weed out the the junk because there's a lot of cars that people take out there that really are on their last leg before they even show up for the event so we got a 20 lap feature at the end of the entire uh uh event which has all these cars which i like to call uh mad max potential Mad Max cars because most of the cars out there really look like they could be in the Mad Max movie. Some people bring demolition derby cars out there. Some people just bring cars that their parents had that they'd inherited that were just junk. Sometimes junkyards like a pick apart or a pick and pull or a salvage yard, they just get a couple of their cars that are intact and running and prep them hopefully for safety they don't always do this which is why i don't do the demo cross racing anymore which if you see any of my videos um i'll talk about that but there are videos out there with charlotte that have things that have happened um that are completely out of anybody's control that an accident happens in an encouraged 20 lap wreck race but um, some things happened. The last race I was at, there was a head-on collision from somebody who obviously didn't understand the uh, moral expectations of, of entertainment and got spun around on the back straight in a F-350 truck and decided to, okay, well, I'm just gonna drive against traffic the other way and go head-on with everybody, which even a lot of demolition derbies, except for the really hard car ones, they, frown upon or restrict you from hitting either the driver's side door or a head-on collision, an intentional head-on collision. Um, so that happened at the last race I was actually involved in that I actually participated in. The next couple races later, somebody had a motor home that um, I don't feel was correctly prepared. Yes, they did race motor homes with conventional cars and a couple race cars. and. Uh, he got what I call pitted, which is when you kind of get up under the rear corner of, uh, of a car in a turn and you take the weight off of their rear wheels with your front bumper and spin them around and that takes them out of your way and you carry on. Well, his motorhome actually flipped over because they're kind of top heavy, caught traction, rolled over, did land back on its wheels, but the whole body collapsed and then the fuel tank came in contact with something that was hot and flamm 
hot and uh, some type of, um, I don't know if open flame sparks or just a hot exhaust manifold ignited fuel that went along the floor of the motorhome and he didn't come out too well. He did live, but unfortunately, um, he uh, is permanently scarred for the rest of his life. And so I missed a few bullets doing that. Um, yeah, I chickened out. I didn't want to do it anymore because um, there's just some, some circumstances you cannot anticipate to get out of. Just like jumping out of a perfectly good airplane with a parachute, you can only make it so safe. I don't have any problem with people doing that. Damned if I'm gonna ever do it, but. So that's where I got involved with the Mad Max cars is I was gonna get rid of that car because I wasn't gonna race it anymore. And um, I ended up building it for Wasteland Weekend. I made a Mad Max car out of it because I was gonna chop it up and make it nothing. And what the story goes is uh, instead of turning it into a pile of junk, I found every piece of junk that I had laying around that was kind of cool and neat and obnoxious, like, uh, let's see, bullhorns, footballs, sports equipment, guns, um, just, you can put anything on a car and make it look like a post-apocalyptic car. It's not any particular specific science. So, um, but I always wanted a street legal Mad Max car. So fast forward a couple years later after I'm racing, I've been to the events. I come across a 2008 Ford Crown Victoria police interceptor from Sacra Sacra Sacramento, California Police Department. And the rear end was pushed up because it had been in a car chase of some sort. Um, or a coffee mishap, who, who knows? And it went off of a uh, embankment or cliff of some sort, went through a chain link fence backwards, I think in the air from what I hear, and landed in a pile of uh, wood wooded area. Let's say it landed in a pile, it made a pile out of itself in a wooded area and ended up I think on its rear end pointing straight up or at an angle and uh, took a bunch of trees out. Um, there was a passenger I believe in it that got injured, I'm not sure. There was blood on the passenger seat. I got the car for like 400 bucks. Totally ran fine, drove fine. They didn't know it ran when I went to pick it up from Fleet Services because when I buy cars, you hear about people getting police cars from auctions. Oh, did you go to an auction? You buy, buy your cars for a couple hundred bucks and they're piles of crap. No, I don't go to auctions. I use a uh, website that I can find out a lot of information from a car that's anywhere in the country on this site and I can do a proxy bid on it, which is, you know, you got a thousand bucks to spend, two thousand bucks, three thousand bucks to spend. If you throw it on there on the website, um, that's your bid and people put their own proxy bids up. If you've got three thousand dollars to spend for some weird reason, Somebody only bids four or five hundred dollars. Well, guess what? You get the car for that price of the last bid below yours, and some uh, taxes and a uh, a fee for the actual auction site, like a five percent fee for them to run the site. So I got the car for like four hundred and fifty bucks. Um, I got it started before I even left the place I picked it up, which was the actual uh, Department of Transportation or Surplus Services or whatever in Sacramento. Um, put the spare tire on it because it had a flat tire. I got a wheel lift on the back of my work truck. It's basically a repo truck, tow truck. And uh, I let it run and idle while I towed it to the gas station. I filled it up with uh, super unleaded because these cars sit for a long time before they get auctioned off and they're taken out of service whether they're wrecked or not and you end up with a car that got parked with a full tank of gas and now it's got three quarters of a tank so you can figure out yourself that about a quarter of the tank evaporated and everything that's left in the tank in that three quarters is con concentrated and probably moisture and crap so I always fill up a car even this car here that I've never seen run yet when I bought it I had it on a trailer with this car and another car, which is Roxanne. Actually, this car I 
had delivered because I didn't have room for this car in Roxanne, so I had to get this one delivered by a shipping transport company. Big mistake for me to drive all the way across the country to Atlanta, Georgia to get this car and then pick up Roxanne, which is the other, the sister of this car, myself in Wyoming. I should have just had them all shipped. It would have cost money, but it would have saved me a lot of time, headaches, and risk. Um, because it, was, it wasn't safe, not because of what I was doing and how I was doing it, it was the weather. It was literally about this time of year. And back east, if you're back east, you know how nasty it gets back there. So anyways, I actually brought the car home, the 2008 police interceptor, Crown Vic, and started fixing it up. I took it and got everything fixed that needed to make it street legal and I drove it for a while. I started doing little tweaks and little modifications. Of course, did the maintenance stuff on it, um, like change the oil and I ended up putting different wheels on it, playing around with different wheel sizes, cutting the wheel wells out. I even ended up putting like a three or four inch suspension left, which believe it or not, you guys out there in the Interceptor crowd, um, for a Crown Vic or any car, there is a company that makes suspension lifts for a crown victoria civilian car release interceptor marauder um mercury um I forget what the mercury version of the uh full-size sedan is but um even a lincoln town car all those lift kits work so i put a three inch lift on it 33 inch tires and then um you know, had to go to the event, car wasn't done, um, took Charlotte again, and then uh, just, uh, it was burning me out dragging a car all the way out there, not so much when I was at the event, but having a car for an exhibition event that I only used for one event out of the entire year. Granted, it was a three to four, even five day post-apocalyptic party in the desert, and I got to drive the car around, but the car's got some miles on it. It's wore out. It's been through a lot of carnage. I did 13 events at the Auto Speedway, and I did not win one of them. But I did come away with trophies and a little bit of money, and I felt satisfied with what I did before I gave it up. Had the car not street legal, bought a 2008 Crown Victoria, started fixing it up, and then... I just got issues, I get medical issues periodically throughout the year, uh, mainly allergies and some other stuff I'm getting figured out now. I couldn't finish the car. I had some things pop up from missing work, from the medical issues. Had to stop working several times, ran out of money, and just really didn't have the spark for that car anymore. And once I did get back on track, I was buying and selling the police cars anyways, just as a hobby and a little bit of a supplement for my extra money. But just to keep this from going into like a hour video, um, I gave that car to my buddy. He finished it. It looks amazing. It's the uh, Crown Vixen um, or Crowned Vixen. I just talked to him. And you'll see videos of that pretty soon. It's a badass car. It's a 2008 Police Interceptor, which is, it looks great. Um, but, and it is street legal, but he's not driving on the street. Now, Lola here, she's going to be called the Knight Rider. Not Knight Rider as in Kit from, you know, David Hasselhoff in that movie. Uh, the Knight Rider from the... Uh, Mad Max movie, the original first movie back in the 70s. So I'm going to kind of keep track as much as I can, but today I'm going to stop talking and uh, start walking around the car, making some measurements, some cuts, some splicing, put some parts on it that don't belong and make no sense to be on it. And um, it's going to go to the repair shop to do some interior wiring stuff that I haven't been able to figure out, um, which I'll talk about in another video which probably had something to do with either sitting out in the weather after it was squashed or the accident that actually 
caused it to be a uh, YouTube star in its own right before I even had a thought in my mind of getting it. Um, and uh, she's going to be repurposed just like Charlotte was. Um, and also like the uh, Crown Vixen, which started out life as a fully functional police car, got wrecked, totaled, salvaged, and back on the street for a while and now it's made into a Mad Max car. And uh, the Crown Vixen is going to have a buddy in crime. And uh, I'll show you guys what I'm doing. Let's do it. Thanks for watching. I uh, post this video today and I got another little video I put on this morning, which is kind of funny with one of my Crown Vicks, the party car. So, here's looking at you.